What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to place a build with a preview and everything. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is open up the character blueprint. In my case, I am going to be using the third person character blueprint. So let's go to the third person folder, blueprints, and open up third person character. Alright, so first of all, before even starting with the tutorial, what I am going to do is just move slightly the camera to the right, so it's easier for us to kind of uh, go ahead and see what we're trying to place, right? It's a good practice. So let's go to camera, boom, and on the socket offset, we're going to add some in the Y axis, for example, 35. As you can see, the camera has moved to the right, and now basically we have a bit of a, you know, of a view to place things, which is pretty nice. Alright, so now what we need to do is basically add some line traces, which are basically some invisible lines called right casts that we go from one point to another. In this case, from the camera angle, use forward until what we impact. And that's where we're going to go ahead and place our build preview. So let's go and just create a new function in our third person character blueprint or whatever character blueprint you're using. And let's just name this something as line trace. And on here, the first thing that we need to do is add this line trace by channel node. And this is the node that will basically create our line trace. As you can see, it takes two inputs that are very important, which are the start and end. So for their start point, we're going to get the uh, follow camera and just get the weld location. OK, and just plug that there. And then for the end point, what well, we want the cat forward vector of the camera so we can know, you know, when uh, at which direction we are looking. We can also just do the same by just getting the world rotation and then the get forward vector is basically the same. So, you know, you can choose if you want to do it directly or with world rotation. And now what we need to do is just times this by a value and this will be the distance. Okay, how much it will go forward. So let's right click, convert this to a float so it can be a nice number. And let's put, for example, 500. So we can build 500 units forward and until that, is where we can build and then you know more far away from that we can't and then we only need to add this two vectors together and we get the end point so we set the draw debug type for duration as you can see uh, we will not see anything because uh, we are not calling this line trains function so let's go to event graph add an event tick and put it on there so why are we doing it on the event tick well that's because on every frame constantly we are going to be calculating this so let me go ahead and just drag the line trace function that we just created and then with that i can just go press play and boom we have it on here as you can see it's going and impacting the ground right well actually it doesn't reach the ground so it has to be even a bit more than 500 maybe let's put something as a thousand just to make sure and now it was you can see that it goes further away and actually makes that little red spot on the ground which means that we have impacted so Basically, there is where we're going to go ahead and just place our preview of our build. So let's create some outputs. In this case, the outputs can be created by, you know, just clicking on the function, adding an output, and the first output will be the location. So where is the location that we want to build on? And then also the rotation, you know. And with that said, now we can just go and pass in a vector. And here we can put a rotator. So let's just go and put this here, but we need to access that uh, information. How do we do it? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we have collided with something. So let's make a branch on the return value. And if it's true, we will go ahead and continue here. And now we need to go ahead and get this uh, out hit and just break it. And with this, we get all of the parameters about the information that we have just collided with. So in this case, the location will be location. And the rotation, this is uh, if you want to kind of build objects uh, coming from the surface so we can just get the normal make a rotation from X and then we can get the return value to the rotation so basically all the objects will be popping up from the surface okay where is it pointing at so you can use that rotation if you want or not and then for false we're gonna copy and paste this node and just place it over here so it will set everything to zero 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 and we will not see that build okay because we have not detected a surface and with that said, now we get two outputs, which is pretty cool, but we will not use them right now. The first thing that we need to do is go to the begin play, which is when the game starts and add a new component. So let's just go here and do component by class. 
there you go, add component by class. And what component will it be? It will be a static mesh component, okay? So this will be the preview that will be created. And we will do it as a component because it will be very easy for us to add it and then remove it later on. I would need to create a whole actor for that, all right? Now, what relative transform will this have? Well, for now, let me just go ahead and just uh, use the make a transform node. And I'm gonna just place it on the 000 just for now because later we will update this. But now the important thing will be setting the static mesh of this object, which is what object we want to place. In this case, I'm gonna be using a, uh, let me use a table, right? There we go. And then also we're gonna go ahead and just set a new material, okay? We'll do that a bit later so I can showcase how this looks. But basically right now, we are creating a new component on the 0, zero of our character, as you can see, which it looks <laughs> pretty funny. Now we just need to update that transform. So we're gonna go ahead and save this mesh component as a variable. So let's right click promote variable. This will be th something as a build preview mesh. All right, place it over here and there we go. So now it is saved there as a variable, so now on the event tick, we can go ahead and use it. So let's drag it, get it, right click, and use a convert to validate it get. So we will only continue if this has been created. And we're doing this later on, so when we remove that, it basically goes ahead and disappears. But basically now, we just need to set the weld transform of this object, okay, make sure it's well transformed with this new location and rotation. So let's right click on the transform, split it, and now we have the individual things as location and rotation. And now if I press play, as you can see, the uh, table will basically appear there. And this was what I was saying about the aligning to the surface. Uh, if you want to use the rotation, you can like that. But in this case, I'm gonna disable the rotation, so I always get the same rotation. Uh, whenever I'm looking and it doesn't align to walls, but you can choose that if you want. Anyways, you can see now it is working. So first of all, let's go and disable the line trace preview. As you can see, let's put it to none. And then also we will go ahead and apply a new material. So let's create a preview material will be something as transparent and kind of, you know, mm, bluish, greenish, whatever you want to put. So let's right click new material M underscore preview. Uh, something as a build preview thing will be a bit better. Preview mesh. Let's open this up. And then we can just go and hold three on our keyboard and just left click. And this creates a new color uh, node. Let's double click and put a color. I think I like this kind of pinky one. And then let's just hold one, left click, and plug it into the uh, opacity, which is not available. So let's select this on our graph to go to the main details of the material, and we can put the blend mode to translucent. And now it will be transparent, and we can put something as 0.5 of opacity, so it will be a bit transparent. We can close this, go back to here, when we add that, and just set the material. Let's move the build mesh a bit later. Boom, 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 boom. And this material will be, of course, the preview that we have just created. Uh, which is here and now when I go here as you can see boom we have this preview material going on which looks pretty cool now of course we cannot still place anything so we need to make sure to do that so let's go down just create a new input so let's go to third person input actions right click input action IA underscore place build let's add it to the collection so we can go ahead and assign a key so this will be place build, expand this, and just click on this icon and then press the left mouse button or whatever key you want. And now let's right click and do a IA underscore place build. And now expand to this and only start it. So when we start pressing the mouse button, we will go ahead and place a build. So we're gonna make it simple. Just do a spawn actor from class. And then you select what actor we want. In this case, let's right click, create a new blueprint class, actor BP build. And let's now just go ahead and add a static mesh to this build, which will be the mesh itself. And by default, I'm gonna be adding that table that I'm using. And now I can just select that uh, build blueprint and specify where. 
which in this case will be exactly on our location that we are choosing. So let's split it and we're going to go ahead and use right click, promote this to a variable. This will be build place location. And I will just save this right after and get it from here and boom and everything by default and let's make this always spawn ignore collision so we will make sure that our build will always spawn even though it's kind of a you know tiny space we don't care about that and now as you can see we can see the preview and boom we can go ahead and place builds which is pretty cool so that's it guys so if i found this video helpful i would really appreciate it you could like the video and subscribe to my channel and lots of unreal into five videos and tutorials so check them out remember to have full access to the prep files through patreon or youtube members so link in the description join my discord server to follow me and um you know other game devs in this amazing unreal engine 5 journey and uh, follow me on my socials and now yes with all i said bye bye